Right? Paradise Dead Church, Brisbane. Here we are again. The 8th of the 9th. 2024. 2024, yeah. What's happening around the world that can uh, quicken us. Uh, yeah. Well, the world, they recognise um, the greats and the, the achievers in the world, but only when they're dead. You notice that? I was watching a program the other day, I think it was SBS, and they were praising and uh, remembering war heroes, and, and they finally come to a place where they're going to um, give this guy a medal. You know, and he, he died years ago. But they're going to give him a medal and give it to the family. I mean, what is the use of that? I mean, it's, it's actually part of the religion of the world, even the satanic religion. Any religion... Uh, or anything outside of Christ is usually satanic. I know that sounds heavy. Uh, some might like to say Luciferic, but it's, uh, if it's not of Christ, it's not straight, is it? Okay. And um, look at the Roman Catholic Church uh, when they actually recognise their saints is when they're dead not before they're dead they're not recognised as a saint and then they pass that by the head of the one world church on earth which is the Pope and Satan is the head of the one world church in the spirit but the Pope is the head on, on earth they pass that by the Pope and if they've done four miracles or something like that, or it's said to have, I can't imagine them doing one without the Spirit, but then they're recognised as a saint. It goes before the board, you know, and the chairman of the board and everyone's bored listening to it and then they become a saint after they're dead. And that's an easy fix because... We read the scriptures in, in, in all the letters and it talks to the saints. The letters are written to the saints. And you, anyone with half a brain doesn't write letters to dead people. So Paul's letters are to the saints, Peter's to the saints, you know. And, uh, and they weren't dead. <laughs> so... The world is pretty much the same, isn't it? You know, um, in the way they do things. I have also noticed this week uh, that um, there was a, an article on uh, the dignity of work. And it took me straight back to Genesis. And I thought, well, the dignity of work uh, and the fall of Adam and Eve brought this, um, uh, what would you say, deterrent upon humanity. The fall of Adam and Eve brought on us uh, this um, desire to be valued and respected. That's what they related to the dignity of work, that you'll be um, respected and you'll be valued. Now, if Adam and Eve didn't fall, you wouldn't need to sweat the brow to feel accepted, um, respected or valued. If Adam and Eve, or initially Eve, didn't stuff the whole show up by touching the fruit whatever it was, I don't know if it was a tomato, but uh, tomatoes are fruits. But they were talking about the dignity. Everyone needs to work because it makes you feel 
accepted and respected and valued. But the reality of that is um, labor has uh, gone so far down uh, in work, whether it's at a, at a university or the, the laborer, the builder, it's come to be their righteousness. <laughs> I know it was my righteousness, uh, and I worked some of the hardest jobs in the land, you know, sawmilling, and, um, farm work, driving uh, heavy equipment like uh, loaders. Um, yeah, tiling. work for uh, builders, house painters. And those, those um, scaffolding they put up around houses, very heavy. And for such a small chappy as my, I am, uh, concreting and working for brickies as a brickies labourer, hard work. And that was my righteousness. It was self-righteousness. Just like the dignity of work. <laughs> I couldn't help it, you know, when they said that, I straight away thought of Genesis and I thought of the fall and what God said to Adam <coughs> now, he said basically, you're going to hunger, you're going to hunger for respect and acceptance and wanting to be valued. That's what he said. He said, now yeah, you'll work with the sweat of the brow. Amen. And how many, including myself before I came to the Lord, men uh, think that today? Because you bust your boiler in a job, uh, you're this, that and the other. But the reality is, Jesus is our... Uh, uh, is the one that makes us feel valued and respected and accepted. Jesus is our true sense of belonging. Our true sense of worth comes through not our righteousness, not self-righteousness, but the righteousness of Father through the blood of the Lamb. And there's no claim for us. There's no, you know, I did this and I did that. See? You can, you can see how far they are away. I mean, it's a big gap between the dignity of work and uh, the righteousness of Father. Now, because I worked hard all day, 12-hour days, shoveling concrete out west, working for Italians, and they don't care if you collapse through heat exhaustion, they'll just walk all over you with concrete boots on. You know. Italians, you know, <laughs> and Germans. I worked for German uh, landscaper, and I tell you what, you know, you know you're doing a day's work. But that justified me my justification then I go to the pub until it closes and I'm justified I've been working hard all day see my own self-righteousness and at the same time let us not forget that uh, the scriptures do say if a man does not work uh, he should not eat we, we also remember that and uh that is, of course, if a man does not or wills, will not work. There's work there and he won't do it. So we keep that in mind too. But um, there are people out there that don't want to work. And everyone works in one way or another to produce the crops and do this and that. But we don't want to let that be our righteousness. We, we don't want to let that be our sense of belonging or sense of respect. Have, uh, you feel respected now. Well, I, I felt respected 
when I got the big respect by doing what Jesus said and repent and you'll be forgiven and you won't carry that insecurity that Adam and Eve had on your head before you met me and everyone said amen. amen. Oh, that's a long one, isn't it? It's sort of like a long train of running, you know. <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, Derby Brothers, long train of running. Thought I seen Miss Lucy down around the track. Lost a home and a family and she won't be coming back. Without love, da, da, da. where would you be right now? Without Jesus, where would you be now? Without a shepherd, where would you be? Given that a shepherd is a feeder. As I said to Brother Shane this morning, if you don't, if you don't get fed, what happens? You starve. And then what happens? You die. So much for those Proverb 18 oneers. Who say, I don't need a pastor. God's my pastor. Hey? I don't need a pastor. God's my pastor. Well, Jesus must have made a mistake. That's why he gave apostles, pastors, prophets, teachers, and To feed. Pastors are feeders. We don't get too carried away. He's just a feeder. He said, come on, children, come have something to eat for their spiritual being, right? And then you go eat the natural food for your body, right? But the spiritual food, I, I'd, I'd rather die of hunger of the, of the body than die uh, of hunger of the spirit because... How can you be saved if you die of hunger of the spirit? You know better than the church at Sardis. You had a name, you're alive, but now you're dead. Why? Because you didn't want a pastor. Oh, whoops. Dignity of work. Everyone works. You need to work. You feel part. You know. You feel respected. And you feel worked against. You know by the other workers. No, no, no. The righteousness of Father through Jesus shed blood, opened the door of faith so we can enter in and receive the outworking of the cross, of the Christ uh, Calvary's tree. We don't have to do anything really to feel it, you know, accepted and, and, and to be whole, but be born again. But do work, yeah, in whatever field you do, whether sweeping floors or building uh, jet aeroplanes. Continue on. Continue on. You know? Laziness and sin. <laughs> that come too. That come with Eve. The big know-all. She knew everything and knew nothing. But she did know everything that needed to be known. But what happened? Uh, she thought she had a better offer. And man, didn't she stuff it up? Big time. Because she thought she had a better offer. <laughs> All right. Yes. Uh, so let me say this. Yeah, on finishing there. Uh, it's part of the world's way. It's part of the wide road. All these uh, being accepted, and the, the majority rules. And when Jesus rules, he is one. He, he is the one. I am the one. I'm not the majority. He, Jesus said, I am the way. Amen? Amen. I am the truth and I am the life. Hey? 
No one comes to Father except through me. Uh, we've probably all heard about the baby, nine-month-old baby that uh, was over at Stones Corner in the park with his family. And an Asian chappy came along and poured hot coffee on the face of the baby and now the baby's got serious wounds, recovering in hospital. All his face is bandaged up, a little nine-month-old boy. And the guy that done it is on the run. Okay? And all they could say was, oh, well, it might have just been that the, that bloke was looking for attention. Like, you know. Really? He's on the run and they th have some reason to believe he's not just nationally on the run but internationally. So they're going to track him down somehow and bring it, call him to account. A 40 year old chappy, Stone's Corner Park. Self harming's on the rise for young girls because they obviously don't have the look. They don't have the Beyonce look or, or the Tai Tai look or whatever it is, you know. Between 10 and 14 year old, escalating, self-harming, worldwide, okay? due to smartphones and social media. Now, when I heard that on the news, the net very next thing that came up was an advertisement uh, about secret, the secret to flawless skin. Hey? Of course, in a jar. It's always in a jar, isn't it? And people believe it. I mean, that, how demented is that? That is not real good here, is it? Hey? In a jar. And hang on, it gets worse. <laughs> it's not... They, they just don't believe it's in a jar. You've got to pay for it. Come on. That's the world we live in. Hey? Flawless, flawless skin treatment in a jar. And they just so happen to keep buying the same jar. See how the mind operates? Yeah. The devil came to the mind of Eve and says, I have a better offer. What do you reckon about that? Yeah. What do you think about that? We've got typhoons over in Japan. 250k winds. I mean, they had to evacuate. Let's think about this. That would be equivalent, or nearly, maybe, to the whole of Brisbane. They had to equivalent. They had to evacuate 800,000 people. Evacuate 800,000. I mean, where are they going to go? 250k winds chasing you. Right? Typhoon. And they're pretty mean. I was caught up in a typhoon, just as the edge of it in the Philippines, and I was driving this little car that I had bought for a mission I was helping. And I'm driving, driving down the road, and it was not a car like a Holden or a Ford Falcon. It was a, a, an Asian sort of car, very flimsy and light. And I'm driving down the road sideways like a crab. And I only was getting the, the off cuts of this typhoon. It hit the mission that I was in and ripped it apart. It had a children's kindergarten it just demolished the roof and flooded it. And 
wiped out every room in the place except for the one I was staying in. I said to the minister there that God was going to humble him a couple of weeks before it happened. He got a bit nasty with me and I said, the Lord's going to humble you because he didn't like me putting John the Baptist. I, there was a, a, an artwork of John the Baptist down at the Jordan and I put it on the back wall of the toilet. Eh? And John the Baptist called them out, didn't he? And then I said to this minister, I said, the Lord's going to deal with you because he wanted to know what that was there for. I said, because the Lord's going to deal with you. He's not happy with you. And then the typhoon come. And then we heard that it was the biggest typhoon that hit that place in a long, long time. And it happened again. And Sister Jovi's family, uh, when I prophesied about a typhoon coming to that area and smashed the place up, the biggest that ever hit them. But yeah, um, just totally wrecked the whole place, except my room was the only room dry in the whole mission. Now, how can you work that out? You can't work it out, hey? Eh? Glory to the Lamb. It's because of the way the Lord does things. And it wasn't long after that, I went my way. Because the Lord said, it's time to move on now. And I moved on as Abraham moved on. I had nowhere to go. As Abraham uh, wandered in the land uh, uh, he was sent to, not knowing where he's going, and I walked down the road with my bag, my suit case, <laughs> and stood on the corner. And the Lord said, look up. And here was a, a chap, he's sitting in the window of a two-story home. And he was sitting there and he was calling out, hey, Joe. Hey, Joe, what are you doing? And then I went over. And he made me tea because he had a coffee shop underneath. And I told him I had nowhere to stay. And he said, you can stay here. He obviously trusted me. He put me in a room next to his and his wife's bedroom. And uh, I ministered in that coffee shop downstairs uh, as of that day and gave them literature, Muslims and uh, Roman Catholics and anyone that came through. But that's the Lord's doing, see. That's the way the Spirit leads, you know. I wasn't thinking of all oh, my comforts. I better not say anything and then I'll have nowhere to stay. Oh, woe was me. I said, no, I'm out of here because the Lord said to me, go your way. Shake the dust off your feet and go your way. And that I did. Uh, the word was getting around that village that this minister had a white servant. Okay? That was me. He's calling me the white servant, the runabout. I didn't realise I was doing things for that people because I cared about them with the love of God. And all they did was complain. Oh, the Koreans give us more money than that. And the Koreans do this and the Koreans do that. So I said, well, you, you best to get in contact with the Koreans because I'm on my way. Adios, amigo. <laughs> Saligari. <laughs> yeah, the dignity of work. <laughs> Typhoons. Uh, Austria. Uh, 
ISIS uh, Muslims. ISIS Muslims were intercepted. Uh, they were hungry to kill thousands of people uh, at a Taylor Swift concert. Right? See, no matter where you go, all around is sinking sand. They're just holding a concert. They're going to have some fun and sing, sing. And ISIS Muslims were going to come down on the concert real heavy. But FBI and, and uh, the authorities got word of it and put an end to it. Okay? All around is sinking sand. There's nowhere safe. But on Christ the solid rock we stand. When I need a helper and a friend, I go to the rock. Okay? So, uh, yeah. Melbourne builder gone down again on the news. Grandua Homes. Another hundred families in despair. Lost their money. Thought the home was going to be built to their specifics and specifications. And uh, Granger Homes went down hard. And now these families, their dreams, dreams have gone downhill. No more. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. We're, we're so blessed to be pilgrims and sojourners passing through. We, we use the things of this world for the glory of the Lord. And we're here for but a moment. Man, uh, at his best, is vapor. Woman, women at their best. And not many women or men ever reach their best. So they're actually less than vapor. Now, need to tell uh, Mr. Packer that. <laughs> He's on tonight, 60 Minutes. With that other rat bag, what's his name? A rock and roll singer. They're on the big yacht, you know, a yacht bigger than a three story house. And Mr. Packer said, Oh, well, you know, having money doesn't really mean you're going to have happiness. Well, he's still got the money, you know. Uh, he's still ripping people off. But, uh, Uh, I'm trying to think of that guy's name that he's got on his yacht and I thought, boy, oh boy, you, you haven't got much to say, but he sings that song, Let Me Entertain You. Let me... Robbie Williams, that's him. Nutty as a fruitcake. Right? Nutty as a fruitcake. And he's on there with him. And they both got the same problem, which obviously brought them together. And they... They suffer from all kinds of depression and this and that. But they just why don't they just turn to Jesus, right? And and sell the yacht and give the money to the homeless. That's what I'd do anyway. He can still have a boat, but he doesn't have to have one worth ten million. <laughs> he can have one. It's worth, you know, 50, 60 grand. That's a nice looking boat. But that's only my view. And that means nothing to the world, does it? Hey? So not only the uh, Melbourne builder, who was highly praised and went downhill. They had no money left. The, the, the people have done their money. And they, they wrestle with, with insurance and, and lawyers... That'll take another five, ten years. <laughs> and then, of course, you've got Star Casino, which is a cracker. Um, Brother Jaden, uh, he wor was working down there on the wharf. Star, the Star Casino. He'll be back from his New Zealand uh, trip maybe next week. But Star Casino 
it's been opened uh, for a couple of weeks, apparently. And uh, they're stinging, they're going to sting the government for hit them up for a loan to keep the doors open at 300,000. Like, hello, you know? They're, they're, uh, they have a bare salary and they're trying to live the life of champagne, right? 300K. I mean, how many homeless families could be helped there with that sort of money? Right? Moving towards half a mil. Oh, help us. Help us out. I think it was 300k, it might have been 300 million, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it, it was above 300k anyway. So there you have it. All around is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock we stand. Don't go by your natural eyes. Do not do it. We do not look at the visible, but the invisible. Because the visible is temporary. Amen? Amen. The visible is temporary. Right? Dear me. Hey? I tell you what, don't give up your day job over there. Hey? Over in El Salvador, at the Bulls of Fire Festival. Goodness gracious. Great Bulls of Fire. And what happened? 25 people were burned in the fire festival at El Salvador and they have this to commemorate. They said the devil, uh, apparently the devil threw bulls of fire at their patron saint while he was praying. It must have burned him up real bad. And so they've, they've marked it on the calendar, you know. And now they have a festival, you know, as the scriptures say. They're, they're in the beggarly realm and they're in the unsaved realm. And what does Galatians 4, 8 to 10 say, John? I will tell you, Brad. It says that days, months, seasons and years, and throw the festivals in. And they have these things to appease their own guilty consciences and to maybe put a smile on their doll for a few hours and then it's all over. Eh? Dear, dear, dear. It just gets worse, doesn't it? Eh? Just gets worse. Um, recently we've been looking at credentials uh, and qualifications uh, and the person who receives honorary credentials um, who's already qualified and I was talking about my credentials recently that I had credentials as a reverend from a, a large international, internationally operating church in the Philippines and the same in America, in the United States. And that uh, is uh, backed up with scripture. If we just go there to Second Corinthians and... In 2 Corinthians, chapter 13. Okay. Verse 1. This will be the third time I'm coming to you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. You see that? By the mouth of two or three witnesses. Hello? Every word will be established. Well, 
I've had two, two witnesses who witnessed that I was qualified before I was born, actually. Qualified, not by man, but by God. Because they judged my writings to be anointed and appointed of God. Okay? And so, uh, these two churches, one in America, one in the Philippines, totally independent of each other. They do not even know each other. But witnessed and uh, confirmed that God's hand was upon me as a minister. So, what an amazing thing to, to have a minister that is, uh, has not been approved of mere men and has not sat under the teaching of mere men or women, yet knows the truth of the scriptures. Amen? Now that is frowned upon because it's against the herd mentality. <laughs> the herd mentality doesn't accept that. You know? And the herd, they never accepted Jesus when he came in. Them. Hey? Or any true prophet that ever walked the face of the earth. Uh, always received uh, the raw prawn. Hey? We got moving along, we got double income families down at Food Bank. They have to go to Food Bank. Double income families because they can't pay their bills. So they pay their bills, then they go to Food Bank. There's no doubt a third world country, isn't it? As I prophesied in 2001, Australia will become a third world country. Right? And rich and poor. Third world is rich and poor. There's no middle class. And uh, what do you hear on, on the news and the television every day? Oh, the cost of uh, daily living. The cost of daily living. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, it's, like, it's just all talk. What have they done about it? They've done nothing. They need to open up the government coffers and they need to start dealing with regulations across the food chain and across businesses and woolies who are pulling the wool. They're not called woolies for nothing. They're pulling the wool over the people's eyes, aren't they? And coals, they're not called coals for nothing either. They're as cold as eyes. They've got no heart for the consumer or, or the man who's trying to um, look after his family. Cold-hearted people pulling the wool over the people's eyes. Hey? It's simple as that. Glory to the Lamb. Hey? So... We go into the message today, eh? Glory to the Lamb. Now, which way are we going to go? Are we going to finish off the gap or... What do you reckon? Gonna finish off the gap? Or press on with the uh, endurance joy? Oh, hallelujah. Okay? Glory to the Lamb. Psalm. Uh, Psalm 119 okay. and this was the gap wasn't it Yeah. so we'll finish that off we'll have a crack at it anyway 
Psalm 119 and the verse is 171. My lips shall utter praise, for you teach me your statute. Now, is that what we're getting? Is that what we're getting from the world? You go out there and everyone's praising you. Because uh, what's coming out of your mouth uh, are the statutes of the Lord. Not the statutes, but the statutes of the Lord. The word of God's coming out of your mouth. You teach me your word, therefore my lips will utter praise. Hey? And praise. Look at Abraham. Praise. He praised the Lord, worshipped the Lord by being obedient. The greatest praise there is to do what Jesus says. That really praises. That really concretes the respect. It's the same be closer to home with a minister. And a minister says something and the congregation don't do it or they deviate from it, that's not respect and it's not uh, praise. It's not highly uh, exalting or lifting up the one that's looking out for your soul. And if we deviate from that, we're only doing the damage to ourselves. It's the same if I deviate from the truth for the sake of gain, as ministers do and have done before I was born. Many have deviated from the truth. I mean, we've got the likes of Balaam, of Beor, prophet of God, uh, preferred the wages of uh, unrighteousness rather than... The way, the way of righteousness. See, it came down to self, didn't it, at the end of the day. And the same with King Saul. It came down to self. Self. Too easy to get into the, oh, I'm not going to do what he says. Oh, you know, I'm just as good as him. He's not above me. It's in the head, see. And then they behave uh, spontaneously to that. I know just as much as him. I'm this and I'm that. I, I, Captain, you know, I, I haven't even been delivered from me, so how can I think any different? Scenario. Hello. You can say, hey, man, oh, my, oh, why? You know, I didn't come here for that. I come here to hear a sunny Sunday sermon and have some sausages. Ah, she crack her beard in the butt. Isn't that right, Sister Jamie? Eh? Of course it is, she said. Of course it is. Eh? Doesn't matter if it's God and the minister or God uh, and the world or, or, or the minister and the congregation. Eh? If we don't toe the line, it's not going to be good for us. Right? Exalting the minister highly in love because he's looking out for your soul. He's not trying to make friends. I can't find that anywhere in the New Testament. I can't find... I'll give a thousand dollars cash. Cash. To anyone that can show me where Jesus or his apostles went around trying to make friends so that they could bring them into the kingdom of God. He said, oh, you don't even have a $1,000. Well, I'll make sure I get it. Hey? I'll just have to borrow it, won't I? I get a loan. But I'm a man that pays my bills. I pay my debts and dues. I owe no one nothing. At the end of the day, people owe me. Right? People owe me. 
Many people would be in the rubbish tin and dead without me telling them the truth that Jesus gave me. So we can't talk about you owe me. That's just hogwash. That doesn't even scratch the surface of the bowl. <laughs> Outer surface. The Lord used me instrumentally. So, uh, this verse is uh, about respect, isn't it? 171. My lips shall utter praise. Hey? For you teach me your statutes. I mean, what else can happen when you're on the narrow road and you're running with Jesus? Hey? It, it can be nothing else. Those uh, who are in the house of the Lord can't help but say, Glory, Jesus, glory. The wide road, don't do that. They're, they're not, they're not um, uttering the praises of the Lord on the wide road. They might be using his name as a swear word or something when they hit their finger with the hammer, but they're not uttering praises. Right? When you go out and you're ministering the word and telling people about Jesus, what he's done for you, and how he's brought you through. I utter the word daily. You know, I utter his praises by writing it on papyrus, putting it on tracts and brochures and booklets and saying, there you go. And I say, look, Lord, I'm praising you again for what you have done for me. I'm going to boast until the day I die how blessed I am, not how blessed I am, but how blessed I am in him and how blessed it is to have him in me and I in him as he is one with Father and so I am one with him. Amen. Glory to the Lamb. It was slain, but we know he rose again. Ah, oh, yes, he rose, he rose again. My Jesus rose, he rose again. The lamb, he was slain, but he rose. Right? Nothing could hold him down. And nothing can hold me down today. Nothing. Nobody and nothing. Right? I just keep getting back up by the grace, forward slash, power of God. Right? Through the living, living Word of God. Eh? I'm not phased. Death doesn't even phase me. Because I know it'll be his decision, his date to the pinpoint that I die. That this body dies and I fly away. Eh? To be with my Lord. Psalm 119, verse 171. My lips shall utter praise, and there's the reason why, in the next line, for you, you teach me. Hey? If we've been taught by him, you will be a praise utterer, and you'll be utterly praising him. Hey? If you've been taught by him. Right? And you walk with him. Glory to the Lamb. Right? The wide road don't have that. The wide road don't know anything about the teaching of Jesus. They have many other teachings they have, like seven day Adventism, you know, keeping Sabbath. They're just shadow people. That's all. You can't go free with that. Mormonism and you know, Christadelphianism, Krispy Kremes, Baptists, 
because they the Baptists forever defeat themselves by saying everyone sins and you will always sin. Well, that renders the word of God void. Totally. Because the scriptures make it clear in Romans. Okay? Can we go to Romans, please? Romans. Okay. And we'll see if, if the Baptist church is right or if I'm right. Romans chapter 6. Verse 20. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. In other words, you were on the wide road and you didn't have to do what the righteous King Jesus said because you were a slave in sin, of sin, and you were free. That's what they call free in the world. They do their own thing, right? 21, what fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? And then we come to the Lord and then the things we used to do, we become ashamed of. Hence we don't do them no more. For the end of those things is death. Death. No life. Just a dead end in hell. But now, having been partly set free from sin. Is that what it says? No. But now, 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 having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, now <coughs> your fruit is holiness. And because you chose to walk in holiness, forward slash truth, you will have everlasting life. I paraphrase that. So everyone could uh, understand a little bit more clearly. Amen? Amen? Let's go back to 22. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. Because you're a slave of God. You're, you're a follower of Jesus and you're bearing uh, this fruit of holiness, which is speaking the truth, walking in the truth, and uh, proclaiming the truth, and therefore everlasting life awaits you. And everyone soon. I like that. Glory to the Lamb. And the final verse 23 in Romans 6, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Nowhere else. Where is it? It's in it's in Christ Jesus. It's, it's on the narrow road, not the wide road. It's on the narrow road. Hey? And what is sin? It is anything that violates the instructions of the Lamb. Glory. Jesus, Son of David, mercy take. That's enough to uh, have the lips going, isn't it, with praise? Hey? The sacrifice of praise. The, the words of my lips. The sacrifice of praise. Hey? Glory to the Lamb. How wonderful. My lips shall utter praise, for you teach me your Statues. You know, this is what causes us to praise the Lord is to know the Word of God and I'm forever, for the last 37 years, praising the Lord each time I learn something new. That's the way I started with Jesus 37 years ago and that's the way I am today. 
The moment he shows me something new, I don't bury it under the bed in a bag or a bushel. I take it out and share it with someone. And then it just doesn't bless other people. It blesses me. And at the same time, he's glad with that. Uh, That would be Matthew 10, 32 and 33. He's very happy about that. And then he goes and tells Father, uh, gives recognition to Father and says, I know him. Jesus lets the Father know. Yeah, he's with us. And then, uh, not only that, then he enlarges and, he, and elaborates on that again and again. The more you proclaim and, and praise and utter, what the Lord shows you, he gives you something fresh again on that revelation he's already given you. But if you just bottle it up and, and leave it rot, it, it just gathers mould and you don't tell anyone, you don't share it with anyone, what sort of blessing are you? Where God's blessing to a lost world. It's just like Jesus is Father's blessing to us. God gave, oh, Father gave his son. They call him Jesus. <coughs> he came and died up upon, up upon the tree. He gave his life, his life for ransom. Now life is worth the living Just because he lives Because he lives I can face tomorrow Amen Father's blessing Father's gift to us And now we go And we carry on that uh, Gift That uh, keeps giving (coughs) By sharing The very word we've been born of the very word that we have been born of, we're sharing. We're sharing with the people who don't know. They don't know. They're not uttering the praises. They're not uttering the praises. Hey? My lips shall utter praise all because of your teaching. <laughs> hey? That's my story for 37 years. I can't get over his teaching. I can't get over the pinpoint accuracy of Jesus' doctrine. Pin- pinpoint, infallible, undisputed, uh, doctrine of Christ the absolutes and the ultimatums absolutely beautiful right? I don't know anything or anyone anything or anyone when it comes to family, friends whatever <coughs> material goods I don't know anything or anyone that is as beautiful as Jesus, as the doctrine of Jesus. It absolutely encompasses me and and overtakes me with those uh, virtues of love and joy and peace just capsulate me, dial it. All because, all because his word is that lamp. I know where I stand and lamp to my feet and light to my... I know where I'm going. I'm not troubled and bothered and in disarray about the future of this country. It don't bother me. has no meaning to me because I know 
My saviour is eternal. The place I'm going to is eternal bliss. Hallelujah. Glory. If we die with him, we'll rise with him and we'll live with him. If we continue to do what he says, we will reign and live with him. The Lord preserves our going out and our coming in from this time forth and forever. Now we need to receive that, receive that, <clears throat> just as we receive the righteousness of Father through the shed blood of Jesus on faith obedience. Okay? How can that be? I have the righteousness of Father given to me. It's all given. Just like my ministry, the anointing that he's anointed me, a specific anointing, Holy Ghost, specific for what he's called me to do. Specific understanding and knowledge and amount and degree and width height manufactured and, and orchestrated, designed by the great uh, creator and saviour, Lord God Almighty. As it says in Revelation 1.8, he's the Alpha and the Omega, right? the beginning and the end, the Almighty. That's written in red. The Almighty. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Revelation 1 8. You can read that if you are doubting Thomas or whatever. Just read it. And when you read it, lay your eyes on it. You, you, once again, you'll fall in love with Him over and over and over again. Each time I read the scriptures, I fall in love with Him afresh. Hey? The Lord's made sure of that. He shut all the doors so I would just love him. He shut all the other doors. I got no interest. I just love him. It, different in all cases. Sometimes it, it, it gives you a real bitter taste in your mouth. You say, I'm not going down there again. And you just love him. And you just, I can spend my whole life through just loving you, my Jesus. Right? Just loving him. That's what it's all about. He gets the preeminence. Then there's no whinging and complaining. Oh, I've been let down again. Oh, I've been ripped off again. Oh, I've been uh, tricked again. Oh, it's been like this and it's been like that. Blah, blah, blah. Right? That's the way it, it, it goes. It, it has never changed on the wide road. It's just disappointment after disappointment, let down after let down, until people become just like stone. Their hearts become like stone. They have no feelings left. Right? That's the work of the devil. But Jesus, he gives us a new heart. He said, uh, he'll put in us a heart from the Father. He'll give us a... Uh, won't have to repair the old heart. He'll give you a new one. And you'll be a new creature with a new heart and a new view and a new understanding and it won't be uh, for the herd. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be for his son that will will exalt him and lift him up amen and i tell you the powers of darkness they'll work against you and work against that they'll have all kinds of worldly filthy carry on going on around you to dissuade you and and to try and uh, stop the preaching of the truth that's the bottom line to stop that truth because it's the truth that sets free it doesn't matter, you know, uh, if the preacher's poor as a badger. 
You know, it, that means nothing. It, it's what's coming out. It, 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 is the preacher anointed? Is the preacher steadfast in the word? Is the preacher become immovable because of his faithfulness towards Christ? Or is he just some man pleaser, woman pleaser that likes to tickle the ears of the people and make a name for himself among the herd? Hey? What's it going to be? Are you going to be that special people? Are you going to be that uh, the followers of Jesus? Are we going to uh, a holy uh, a um, a holy and a uh, royal priesthood, holy nation, hey? And in the background, you got the old devil working his discos, the, the disco demonic ducks, and trying to uh, pull it all down. But it doesn't work because the word stays the same. The word will not be hindered. The word will go out and, and it will never return void. Ever. So today, dear brethren, today, um, let me say this. We're going <coughs> to have to continue on still with the gap. Hey? With the gap. And, uh, and here we are in, in Psalm 119, 171. Uh, my lips shall utter praise uh, for you. Teach me your statutes. And uh, people who aren't hearing the doctrine of Jesus, they're, um, they're, you don't hear the praise on the lips. They look like they've been baptised in lemon juice and there's always these dramas there's always something there's always something whinge about you know they're always whinging and oh me and poor me because it's all about them it's not about jesus it's got to be about jesus you know what i mean it has to be about jesus it has to be that jesus is exalted and praised and the utterance of your lips is about jesus and look what he's done and look at this look at that I want to share that with you because what he's done for others, he can do for you. Amen? So, I feel led uh, to cut this message short today. And we just, I think we just leave it there. And we'll go on next week, Father willing, we'll go on next week and we'll rejoice in the Lord again. But we've we got, we, we got some gems to take home with us. So, Let's give all the glory to Jesus. Everybody in the house then? Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh.